Hello and welcome. Let's talk about burns. So, what does it mean by burns? Burns may be defined as injuries resulting from the application of dry heat, example flame and heated solid substances or chemical substances to the external or internal surfaces of the body resulting in more or less destruction of the tissues. The scars may be defined as the injuries produced by the application of the moist heat, example a liquid at or near its boiling point or in its gaseous form such as steam to the body. Classification of bones According to the depth of the bone, it may be superficial partial thickness bones, deep and full thickness bone. Depending on the thickness of the skin involved, it may be first, second and third degree bone. On the basis of the contact, it may be scald, fat bones, flame bones, electrical bones, cold injury, friction bones, ionizing radiation and chemical bones. Now assessment of the bones. The extent of the bone is determined by the rule of the nine or Wallace's rule of nine. Where the head and the neck is 9% in adults, 18% in children and in infants 20%. The front of the chest and the abdomen wall is 9 and 9 into 2 is equal to 18% in adults, 18% in children and 10 into 2 is equal to 20 in infants. Back of the chest and the abdomen wall is 9 times 2, 18% in adults, 18% in children and 20% in infants. The lower limb is 36%. In adult, 27% in children and 20% in infants. The upper limb is 18% in adults, 18% in children and 20% in infants. The perineum is 1% in adults and 1% in children. Depth. The first degree bone includes uh, epidermis alone with the features of erythema or erythema and blister formation. The injuries are painful and heal with the formation of scar. The second degree bone involves epidermis and dermis. The third degree bone involves structures deep to the skin with healing by scar and contracture formation. The measurement of the bone patient, the pre hospital care includes immediate care where there is ensuring the rescue safety, stopping the burning process, checking for other injuries, cooling the bone, giving oxygen and elevation as well as hospitalization. Hospital care The initial assessment should be history checking, the physical examination should be done. There, uh, there should be assessment of the vital signs, assessment of the extent of the bone by rule of 9 and assessment of the depth and degree of the bone. The initial measurement should be ABCDE and F which includes airway control, breathing and ventilation, circulation, disability, exposure with environmental control and fluid resuscitation. The fluid replacement should be done by Parkland Regiment where in first 24 hours the crystal solution which is Hartman solution should be given. So the amount of the fluid given in milliliter in first 24 hours is 4 milliliter multiplied by body weight in kg multiplied by percentage of the body body burnt surface area. And in second 24 hours the colloid solution should be added with crystal solution like plasma aluminum dextron and the dose should be 0 0.35 to 1 milliliter per kg per percent of the body surface area should be given. Now local treatment should be done like esterotomy for the circumferential full thickness bones and other treatments should be done as is treated here. The nutrition the bone patient should be given as mentioned here. The metabolic changes in the bone includes hypermetabolic rate, ne negative nitrogen balance, electric imbalance, deficiencies of the vitamins and essential nutrients, metabolic acidosis due to hypoxia and lactic acid. And others. The infection control in the bone patient should be done by the bone patient are immunocompromised, so they are susceptible to infection. So, steroid precautions should be done, swabs should be taken, and rise in the WBC, thrombocytosis, and incredible are warning signs of infection. The causes of the death in the bone patient includes hypovolemia, renal failure, shock, pulmonary edema, AIDS, septicemia, and multi organ failure. Principle of the management of the bone includes stopping the burning process, application of cold water, assessment of the extent and depth of the bone. Establishment of intravenous line, fluid replacement, antibiotic, local wound care, skin grafting, and others. Intravenous fluid used are Ringer's lactate solution, Hanger Hartman solution, fresh frozen plasma, and human albumin solution, as well as hypotonic solid. Monitoring of the patient should be done, which is given here, mentioned here. You can note from here. The measures to prevent complications of the bone are also given here. Intravenous fluid for volume replacement, adequate dressing and others. 
complication of the bone immediate complication include shock renal acrodynal failure in your tract infection pulmonary edema and others hypothermia multiple organ system failure toxic shock syndrome electrical injuries often cause fractures major internal organ injury and convulsions direct complication include infection protein losing enteropathy cerebral damage bed sores and the direct complication includes development of the contraction complications of the bone contracture like hypertrophic scar keloid and marolin's ulcer the criteria of the hospital admission of the bone patient is the suspected airway or inhalation injury any bone likely to require fluid resuscitation any bone likely to require surgery patients with bones of any significance to the hands face feet or perineum patients with psychiatric or social background makes it inadvisable to send them home any suspicion of the non accidental injury or any bone in a patient at the extreme of the age any bone with associated potentially serious sequel including high tensile electrical bones and concentrated hydrofluoric acid bones end of the topic